Jared, you brought her home safe and sound, brother. Yep. I appreciate it. She's looking sharp. Took care of her. I'll tell you what. It was rough not having her here. What do you say we go for a spin? Well, speaking of, how the exhaust leak and the... Well, the you want... Coolant, you want you want to go now? Speaking? Yeah, why not? Well, did, I mean, there's stuff. Take you, take you he, too much time. I hope it wasn't too he, much. Well, you've been headache. away from the channel. Why don't we talk to him about you know, how's Josh doing? We don't need to. I'm, I'm good. They've I'm seen just, truck content. They've seen trucks. Keys, tell you what, I want to take this but bad boy. We shouldn't rush bed. into anything. So it wasn't too much of a hassle. I'm, I'm hoping. There's some stuff we need to talk about. Such as. Things. Well. Do you want me to start this truck, Jared? Not really. Why would I not want to start this truck? So, those of you that follow us know that I recently lost an injector. And after a week and a half of driving Josh's truck, he lost an injector. Yes. Yes, Surprise! I did. <laughs> All right, so anytime I have an issue, I go to my Torque Pro app. I recommend it for everyone who, who drives, basically. All you need is uh, this Elm 327 is what most people use. It's very cheap and affordable. What is it, like five bucks? Yeah, I think they go anywhere from five to 15. There's some high-end ones, but we don't really have any experience with those. Yeah, cause, so this I recommend this. Fine. Uh, they seem to work fine. Uh, just plug that into your OBD2, which is under the dash on 90 plus percent of vehicles. And then uh, the Torque Pro app, anybody who, with an Android, it only costs like $5 for the Torque Pro on, uh, on, an, on the Google Play Store. So let's see what, what codes we have here. I do have two codes on here from getting rid of the butterfly uh, in my in my uh, intake elbow. So this was cleared. Did you clear it? When I had it, one of like the okay. front, yeah. So P1000 just means that it's not done reading. I don't have enough miles on it yet. Uh, these two powertrain exhaust gas recirculation, that's that's from getting rid of the butterfly in the intake elbow. Uh, this PO266, that's what we're dealing with right now. Cylinder two contribu contribution balance. Uh, basically what that means is cylinder two is not doing anything for an extended period of time. So we lost cylinder two. Uh, I'm not gonna start the truck because it seems like I'm not doing it any favors by starting it up. What happens when I start it up is it smokes like a frickin' pig. Uh, if you guys wanna see that, check out my video of my truck smoking <laughs> like a pig. So, she's upset, she's hurting. Jared just uh, had my truck for, for a while, so. He recommends the first thing you do if you're having an issue like this is uh, to check to make sure no one put gasoline in your in your diesel. Since Jared's here, I'm just going to ask him, Jared, did you put no, gas I did in my not diesel? put gas in your diesel? So obviously, gas has a has a smell to it. Uh, you can be able to smell that pretty quickly. So we don't have any gas in the diesel. We better not have gas in the you diesel. You do not have gas in the diesel. The next thing he does is, is he he go, he just uh, cycles the the glow plugs and listens to the injectors. You'll hear the uh, buzz. Yeah, it's a buzzing noise. I can't make the noise, but essentially, if if you have injectors that are sticking uh, or or not not firing, you can sometimes hear a delay in the. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, as they as they go. So do you want to listen to the buzzing? So I'm about, I'm gonna turn it on here and it should be quick and no delay. So to me they sound pretty good. 
Uh, maybe brand new injectors would sound better, but they sounded There's pretty consistent to me. Uh, the next step, <clears throat> got some coolant spillage here on my coolant filter, but we'll fix that leak some other time. Got more pressing things to do. Here is, uh, this is the wire to your starter. If by disconnecting this, you're going to bypass this, the starter, so the truck should not start. I do have the keys in my pocket here, so I know it's not going to start. And all you have to do is you see that pin in there, you just got to make contact, uh, get it power. So I'm just going to put it on my positive terminal. What are we listening for here? And what we're listening for is, uh, is as it cranks, it could... It could potentially, what you want it to do is be uh, uh, balanced and consistent as it cranks over. If you hear a, like a whine where it dips down, that's going to basically, uh, by ear, tell you you have you do not have uh, consistent uh, cylinder compression. So you don't want to have like a like dips and drones and in, in the to noise. be an even <coughs> rhythm almost. And I did this. And all I did was start the truck up really uh, a few times, and it sounds a little bit different. So maybe some some of you guys watching can tell me uh, what you think about the the sound it's making. <laughs> that sounds good to me. So you don't want to do that for too long. Uh, you don't want to overheat anything, but uh, as it's cranking, but. It sounds pretty consistent to me. I'm going to do it one more time. My uh, stereo bat positive cable I'm tied to, so you'll, if you don't have a power wire, you'll probably have a little bit more room uh, to connect this to your positive terminal. But again, it should be consistent uh, as they all crank if it goes or some, something, some sort of dip in the sound, that's going to be a loss of compression. So, I'm thinking, as Diesel Tech Ron calls it, a uh, base engine issue. I don't think I have a base engine issue. At least I certainly hope not, because <clears throat> I do not plan on doing the build that Jared's doing uh, at the moment. I just bought an, uh, a second car, so... <laughs> So I would like to hold off on that and buy the parts, uh, and and kind of highly recommend buying parts have first. Kind of have the have everything I need in the garage, and then I can take it uh, to have the build I want, rather than rather than just say, shoot, I have to go and build the motor on my truck or engine. So what we're doing here is we're going to try to limp it through the winter. Uh, it's saying cylinder two, and we're assuming that it's the injector at this point because of the smoking. We're thinking it's stuck open. Jared does have an injector, uh, so we are putting that injector in the cylinder number two. The cylinder order on the driver's side of the 6.0 is 2468, and then over here it's going to be 1357. So, odds on the passenger side. Uh, and evens on the driver's side. So it looks like what we have to take out here to get to the valve cover is the degas, the ficum. The ficum is new from the build that we did over the summer. Take out the, the uh, air filter uh, and the intercooler pipe. And that should take us down to the, the valve cover. What do you think, Jared? Yeah, that intercooler pipe might not need to come out. Might be nice to take it out, but it might not need to. Um, I'm not for, uh, with this. Does your battery need to come out to get this guy out, or is that it's the same one you have? It's different style. No, it doesn't. No. So, all right, guys, we're gonna we're gonna kind of get set yeah, we're up gonna, and we're ready. Just gonna take it apart. If if you have any concerns on how to take that apart, we do have videos up. Uh, in regards to taking taking this down, I think uh, the oil. I think my oil cooler 
uh, build series. I have a brief one taking stuff down. I show a fair amount. So we'll get back to you once we get those parts out and let you know where we're where we're at.